Thank you, Julio. My goodness, that's a, a big shoes introduction that I'm not quite sure I can fill, but uh, I want to thank you for inviting me to say a few words today and uh, also to uh, invite you to very quickly move into the reception, which I'm very pleased that uh, our government has had a small part in hosting. I want to also acknowledge uh, the sponsorship of the Division of AIDS at uh, University of British Columbia in Canada, who has also helped to, to sponsor this along with, of course, UNAIDS. So it's a real pleasure to be here, and as Julio said, um, I have uh, had this great privilege uh, given to me to be able to represent Canada uh, here uh, to lead our delegation as Minister of Health for Canada. I do have a long-standing interest in the matter of HIV, uh, having remembered the very first time that I heard about it as a young medical student in Canada and having spent the first decade of my medical career practicing in West Africa in the country of Niger. Uh, I continued to uh, be involved in HIV primary care in Canada, got very involved in some advocacy work, uh, trying to raise money, encouraging Canadians to give one day's pay on World AIDS Day to an organization that would uh, support people affected by HIV. And so uh, I want, I come to this uh, role as Minister of Health now looking at HIV from a different perspective, but I wanted you to know that background because I suspect that in this room, if not in this room, certainly in this conference, are young people, uh, scientists, advocates, activists, who are interested in HIV, who are passionately committed to see that their country would do better uh, in uh, responding to HIV, who may remotely in the back of their mind be considering a future in politics. And uh, you may have heard some of our panelists here talking about the fact that one of the number one factors to be able to drive the work of a country, and certainly the Minister of Health from Lesotho uh, very uh, ably de demonstrated this in his passionate remarks today, please consider politics as your next career uh, season as a way that you can continue to advocate and make decisions. And one of the reasons I went into politics was that one of our former prime ministers, Paul Martin, uh, told me that, you know, if, if all things work out as, as, as you'd like them to, you can, in, in politics, have the opportunity to make a decision in five minutes uh, that will change the face of things that you've been advocating for uh, in another position for a very, very long period of time. And when I had the opportunity very early, not only to, of course, endorse the 90-90-90 targets as Minister of Health, very soon after that, we were able to announce uh, exemption for the second supervised consumption site in Vancouver. We were able to give an extended con uh, exemption uh, to the InSight, which is probably well known to many people in the room and to be able to make it extremely clear that our government would support all evidence-based measures to respond to public health threats such as HIV. Um, we, uh, we want to be leaders in that area so I, I, I throw that out to you as a challenge and to uh, c uh, encourage some of you to consider that that may in fact be in your future. I'm very proud uh, of the scientific work of the Canadian community and so many researchers who have been represented at this conference and uh, certainly it's exempl exemplified by one of our national treasures, uh, uh, Julio, who is here with us today and we're, we're very proud to share him with the world uh, and to, to see the impact that and to have, have uh, been able to steal him away from Argentina to, uh, to come to Canada and to, uh, to be a real world leader in this and to help uh, it, it, but of course, he would say as, as quickly as anyone else that ev for every Julio, there's, a, there's an army of people around him uh, that make his work possible, and certainly some of you are here today. You know, I think one of the real... Uh powers of the treatment targets, the 90-90-90 target, is uh, because of the way that it, for, it challenges us. As I sat there and listened to this panelist, oh my gosh, I was sitting beside Dr. Matani, who is a president of our public health agency in Canada, and I kept elbowing her saying, we've got to do better. Lesuch is ahead of us. We've got to catch up. <laughs> so we are, you know, it brings out the best in the competitive spirit of all of us. I want to get back here in 2018 and I want my president of my public health agency of Canada to be on one of these stages and talk about how, well, the progress that we in Canada have made. So uh, we've got work to do. 
we will challenge one another and uh, in the Canadian context there still are challenges and I just wanted to point to one that I think uh, Luis uh, pointed to because it, it's become increasingly apparent to me uh, and this has been mentioned by others here and it's certainly one of the issues that I am hearing loud and clear from our Indigenous populations in Canada which is one of the areas where we are really uh, not doing well in terms of reaching target uh, and that is the matter of stigma and discrimination and I spent last week traveling through First Nations communities in Western Canada and talk to people about the reasons why they don't access care. And the stories that I heard from young uh, First Nations, uh, young people who talked about the way that they were treated when they went to hospitals in Canada broke my heart. The way that they were ignored, left to sit in, in waiting rooms, um, the things that were said to them and about them and behind their backs that they overheard, the, the discrimination that they face because of their indig indigeneity, not to mention the fact that they may be gay, that they may have other, uh, uh, they may be uh, users of injection drugs, all of those add up together and are a serious, serious barrier to being able to access the kind of uh, prevention care and support that they need. We have to do better as a global community to address each of these key populations and be able to find ways to, uh, to no longer tolerate this kind of discrimination. We in Canada joined many of you uh, it, at the uh, political declaration that was made at the UN high level meeting recently and talked about how we are going to fast track our collective e efforts to meet these targets. And I think the emphasis there on key populations was a theme that I've heard emphasized here in the last couple of days and that we need to continue to address and certainly Ambassador Burke so, spoke so beautifully to that, that if we don't start to dig in and sort through that data and find out where those key populations are, we're not going to be able to get get to target and once we get there one of the things then to do is to address that stigma and discrimination to find out why those key populations are not appropriately accessing care and how recognizing the increased susceptibility that that gives to them. I'm so impressed to see as well, and this was certainly brought out in the political declaration uh, at the meeting, uh, re recent meeting, was that need to accelerate uh, our, our approaches, whether it be prevention, treatment, care, or support, and I certainly feel that sense of urgency here at this meeting today. I want to acknowledge the scientists in the room and just say that I am so impressed with the science that's been pre presented at this meeting and how that in turn is going to, uh, in, a, in the spirit of continuous quality improvement, allow us to do that kind of cycling where now we've learned one thing, we know that we need to act differently and we need to measure how we're acting differently and, and, and cycle uh, from research into practice as much as possible. Canada will be there supporting you. I am going to certainly be encouraging our our research community, our activist community, our educational community, our clinical community to do everything that we can. As I've said, we will be 100% uh, supportive of harm reduction measures. We're looking forward to opening, hopefully in uh, my tenure, new supervised consumption sites across the country and be a world leader in that. We also, I want to take this opportunity to challenge you around uh, your donor contributions. I'm very proud to say that our Prime Minister uh, has invited those of you uh, from around the world to come to Canada for the replenishment conference in September of the Global Fund for AIDS, TB and Malaria. We have also uh, made our commitment for a 20% increase in our own contribution to 785 million for the next replenishment cycle. If your countries are not already uh, increasing their, their contributions to the Global Fund, let me know the address of your Minister of Health. I will be contacting them and encouraging them uh, to give appropriately. final point I wanted to make was the, the responsibility to prevent infections and to make sure that people living with, at risk of, or affected by HIV and AIDS, and the ability for people living with HIV to be able to have a long, healthy, happy, productive, meaningful life doesn't reside with any single country. It doesn't reside with any particular organization, any particular demographic group. It's a shared obligation, shared by every one of us here in this room. And we all know that where we have seen success in our fight against HIV, it's been where we have embraced the power of collective efficacy, as was so uh, ably described by, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget her name, who wrote that wonderful book called, uh, who wrote, 
it's, it's, I, I'll, I will come to the <laughs> recall who wrote uh, the, I can't remember her name, but anyway, the power of collective efficacy is the recognition that when we have a threat amongst us, we gather together, we join forces, every uh, member of society together. And uh, tomorrow, as you may know, is Nelson Mandela Day. And Nelson Mandela, when he got out of jail, said, we dare not linger for uh, our long walk has not yet ended. And today, as we're feeling the energy, the power of 90-90-90, the absolute urgency of our need to respond to key populations, we dare not linger here today in 2016. Our long walk has not yet ended. Let's keep it up together. Thank you. Thank you.